Hi, Aaron here with iBorder Pair and iPhone Data Recovery, and today I have an iPhone 12 Pro that has been run over on the freeway that's in here for data recovery. Um, it's been smashed. The back doesn't look too bad. The front doesn't even look too bad. It just looks like a cracked screen. However, um, it is behaving in an odd way. I've done just a little bit of diagnostic to it so far. I've taken off the screen obviously and I've taken off the shields and I've done some very, very minimal diagnostic here. I measured some caps around my NAND chip up there and down here and I checked what it was doing on my DC power supply and that's, uh, that's actually what I want to show you here. So let me get my DC power supply in frame here. So this one is giving me um, a problem that's difficult to deal with for many. So what it does is essentially nothing. When I touch the probes to the battery connector, I get no amp draw, um, which is normal. But once you press this power button, you're supposed to see some amp draw and I'm getting zero. Every once in a while I get that 0 0.01, which I just saw, but mainly it's just flat zero. And usually that will indicate some sort of power rail short on here. Um, when it's flat zero, I can never quite remember which rails tend to be short, but something is probably short. So my RAM, I already checked all these lines around NAND, so I know NAND is not short. Um, you know, I checked these ones and, and these ones and these ones, and those are all the power supplies for NAND. Um, when I plug it into my ammeter here, I'm getting a like point. 0.41 to 0.43 amp draw, which again, that normally indicates some sort of short. I don't know what those magic numbers are about, but those numbers almost always indicate some short. And this one's actually rising up slowly. It hit like the 20s and the 30s, and now it's gonna be stabilizing around that 41, 43, and then alternating right there. So yeah, I think this is something is short. I'm just not exactly sure what. So my plan of action for this one, I'm going to take the motherboard out of the housing and then I'm just going to go ahead and split the two halves of this board and, and we can get a, a good look at the insides. So give me a moment while I do that and we'll get started right away. Thanks. Okay, I have the motherboard out of the housing now, so let's take a look at it and see if we can determine anything. There are a few things I noticed right off the bat. Um, one is that I can see the imprints on here. That means it took a big impact. Also, this one is obviously just bent or, uh, you know, misshapen. Um, let's see if it looks like the, the board has been have come loose or not. Let's switch over to big scope cam. So the side of it, it doesn't really look like it's been splitting or anything. It looks okay. But I am pretty sure that I have a short on this board. I'm a little bit less sure than I would be for other models and that's just because I've seen very odd behavior on the 12s already um, in regards to just like uh, prompting to boot with the power button like I've seen where it just doesn't want to prompt to boot with the power button but it would prompt to boot with the charge port and then as long as you prompted to boot with the charge port first then you can go back and the power button would have prompted to boot again afterwards like I've just seen a lot of strange inconsistent behavior with the 12 so I don't like to to really trust anything yet until I've got more of them under my belt and I've been able to see more of a pattern um, but still from past experiences working with iPhones I still believe that this is going to be a short on some power rail um, it may even be worth it to see if I can measure some of these um, test points because maybe I can just find the power rails I'm looking for with test points. I'm also 
curious to see if there'll be anything bad under here. Um, according to ZXW, there's only coils underneath this shield here, which means I, I probably shouldn't have a, a short from there um, because it's not easy to short a coil to ground because it's not really touching ground anywhere. Um, but having said that, if my coil is exposed on the top, then it could be um, have the shield being pressed into it, causing it to short. So you know what, I think I am gonna check that first. Because if that's the solution, that would be um, the easiest way to, easiest thing to deal with. And no, it doesn't look like this one has anything exposing on the top, so I don't expect anything could have been short from that. Let's take this thing off now as well. also possible that this is a little um, bent or dented or something like that and it, it could be uh, touching something that's underneath it causing it to short I mean it doesn't really look bent or anything so I guess probably not in this case but but I do believe something is short So I'm gonna just pull this shield off, um, but first I'm gonna get rid of this underfield that's on the on the inside of that. Scrape away this underfill just so I can pull this shield off a little bit easier. Let's see if I can just pull this off with my uh, wire cutters here. I'm not sure how difficult it is to, to pull this one off, honestly. Oh, that was easy.
So I am glad to see all these coils and stuff here. It looks like most of my power rails are going to be right here. Uh, mainly because this is my PMIC right here. So let's see what these lines are and if any of them are short. This is PP1VAS4. What is this line? I don't know. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on all of these coils, see what the lines are, and then measure the capacitors that are connected to them. So I clicked on this coil. All of these capacitors are on this line. This coil, this line is called PP1VAS4. I don't know what that is, but I do know it should have like a normal diode mode reading, like 0.3 or something, which it does, 0.27. So that's fine. Let's just let's just click on all of them and see if any of them are short. So that's a boost, and this is display line. So these caps are boost caps. Boost caps are good. This is a display line. Display line's good. Let's see what else we got here. pp one gate always. These guys. Hey. Hello. How are you? Good. One moment. Okay. Let's keep looking. I had another customer drop off another um, physically damaged iPhone 12 Pro. It looks like it's going to be a very similar case to this one. So definitely want to get get these types of repairs down so I can figure out what's going on with them. He also already went to another repair shop and. You know, basic repairs didn't fix it, so it's going to be a motherboard problem. So hopefully we can figure out what's going on with these types of problems. Let's just keep checking these coils, these lines, to see if I can figure out where my problem is. That's a low voltage line, it's or a low resistance line, that's normal. PPGPU should also be a low resistance line. I never I never see problems with PPGPU, so I don't expect one here. Probably normal. So what else do we got going on? SRAM line, let's check that out. Looks normal. Another sock on the way. You know what, I'm just going to measure all of these caps. It's going to be easier than going back and forth. I'm going to look for a full short because that's what I expect is the problem. Everything looks okay so far.
so nothing jumped out at me. Everything looked okay. I'm probably just going to have to split this board and look on the inside. For all I know, it's not short and that these ones can just give that amp draw when it's disconnected from the bottom board. Like I, I really don't know the tendencies of this phone yet. so. I do know for whatever reason, if I connect a good battery to this one, that it's not giving me any amp draw through my USB ammeter, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, it's possible because it's not a 12 Pro battery, it's just a 12 battery, but I also know I've used a 12 battery on a 12 Pro Max, and that worked. Um, so I would expect it would work with the 12 as well. So I, I don't know why with a good battery I'm not getting any type of um, reading through that because that's, that's something a little bit odd that I noticed. Just to double check that, I'm going to see one more time what it's doing with the batteries. I'm going to use a different charge port this time, a good one instead of the one that's in there. The, the one in there might be good, but I've already used this one. I know this one is good. You know, I don't remember if this other little flex is, is necessary or even what it does. But let's just put it on just in case. If anything, that might be where my disconnect is. Because that's on the lower board. So maybe that's why it didn't want to give me an amp draw. You know, maybe I haven't used this charge port yet. I, I don't quite remember now. But when I plug in the battery that it came with, I am getting, let's see, Same amp draw, so it starts at 14, 1 to 26, up to 32, and 38. It's probably going to stop at 41 and 43 because that's what it was doing. I wonder if there's any heat at this point already. That would be interesting to figure out. I don't feel any heat. But this one, okay, yeah, it just fluctuates for 0.41 to 0.43. And that's what it's been doing the whole time. But then when I take this battery out, this is the one that was already in the housing with it. 
And I put this 12 battery in, instead of the 12 Pro, which, again, I've used it on a 12 Pro Max already with no problem. It, it just gives me flat zero. And I'm not sure why. All right, I just wanted to double check that. So the only thing I could think of to do next is to split this board and see what it's doing with just the top board. Um, I don't need the bottom board anyway. And the bottom board might be where my problem is. Well, on, maybe I do need the bottom board because of this plug. Let me see. No, I think that that plug that's that's connected to the charge port, I think is just for service or, or Wi-Fi or something. I don't think it matters at all. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and split this and see what we can see. Let me answer that phone real quick. Okay, so yeah, let's put this into the jig and see how it behaves when it's just the top board only. So these boards are really hard to split. I have to up the temperature a lot more than I would on older models. Older models I split them at about 190. This one, I had it at 220 but it still didn't really want to go. I'm going to move it up I think to 235. for this to heat up. And where shall we enter this thing? I guess I'll just enter wherever I can. Maybe I'll lift from the bottom and try to lift it up like that. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. I'll pause the video for a couple of minutes while this is heating up. So it's already been four minutes, but it's saying the temperature is still only 180. And I know it doesn't like to start to release until like it gets all the way up to about 220. Um, so I'll probably still need to wait a little bit longer. It's just I, I don't really like to wait much longer than the time I have. But I guess if it takes that long to heat up, there's nothing I can do about that. So I'll just continue to let this heat. I'm going to see which one of these is worse. So it's at 190 now, but I still don't think it's going to be ready to lift. It's not. I'm already pulling kind of hard, and I don't. You, you never want to pull like super hard when you're lifting these things. They have to want to release. If you're pulling hard, you're going to be ripping things. It's up to 195, and yeah, it just doesn't look like it's ready yet. I'll pause it for a little bit longer. It is 
now at 211. Let's see if it wants to release. Still doesn't look like it's quite ready. Nope. Again, I really don't want to pull on this. Pulling is not the, the way to do it. Looks like it did start to release, maybe. It looks like it's coming up, but let me just wait like another 30 seconds for it to fully heat, so I'm not I'm making sure I'm not pulling pads. Did rip a few pads. So I, I really, in the future, I need to make sure to just let it heat up. I get real concerned because I'm letting it heat up for longer than I normally would. But these pads, they may have ripped because of me. Um, they may have ripped from the impact because this was such a big impact. Also, obviously, a coil came loose. Um, so the phone's not going to boot without that coil. So there's obviously an impact, and that could have caused the pads to become loose or uh, disconnected like that. But it's just clear that this can handle more heat than I'm giving it. It just never used this much heat in the past so it's scary to use it but I need to remember these can handle more heat there's no way I'm gonna overheat the CPU on the top board when I'm not even melting the interposers so this coil was gone here so I really thought this was gonna be short but you know I don't know what this coil is and with that missing It is definitely possible that it's just that coil, that missing coil is the problem. So let me see what that coil is, because I have no idea. You know, if that's my boost coil, I believe that would give me zero prompt to boot. Um, zero amp draws after prompt to boot if that was missing. So let me see. I'm wondering if that's my boost coil. Ah, it, it is the boost coil. Okay, okay, okay. So I've seen in the past that when the boost coil is missing, that the phone just does nothing like that. That zero amp draw. 
um, that we are seeing on the DC power supply. So I'm really glad to see that. I no longer think that there's a short on this board. I think the only problem is that missing boost coil because that's the same behavior I should be getting um, on my DC power supply when that's missing. So I've definitely seen in the past where the, the zero amp draw after prop to boot could be a power rail short. Um, it's like something is shutting off the CPU from doing anything when it detects that short. Um, but it's not like when you see an immediate, or it's not like when you see an immediate spike in, in current after you prompt it to boot where it like just sits at 0.3 or 0.5 or 0.7. Those almost for sure will always indicate a short or a main rail short will always show up before you prompt it to boot, just when you touch the battery connector. But this problem that we saw specifically, it's a lot harder to categorize because it can be a short. I've seen shorts give that same behavior where it does nothing, but I've also seen the missing boost coil give that same type of behavior. And just knowing that, that would also kind of imply that other missing um, certain voltage lines could, could do that same thing. A, a normal missing voltage line, a CPU power rail or a NAND power rail um, or RAM or something like that, if that coil is missing or any of the power rail's coils are missing, I'll normally see some amp draw and then a steady low current consumption. So like 0.06 or the, the point, you know, 0.04, something small like that is normally a missing coil. Uh, but that's only on certain lines, you know, that you can't use that general rule for every single line. Um, some lines behave differently. And I know I've seen boost coil missing giving me the zero ramp draw. So I'm very, fairly positive that that's all this one's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fix those pads and see if I can get that coil to stick again. And then I kind of expect it will boot. I don't know if the, if the 12 Pro needs the bottom board for data, but we'll, we'll figure that out in this video. noticed that the 12 series um, while the motherboard tends to seem to be pretty strong uh, I've seen already a few of them with coils that have popped off so I expect to see that more and um, it will be smart to really learn to kind of categorize the problems I'm seeing
whatever. I couldn't get that pad to come off, but it doesn't really matter as long as I have solder on there. Alright, so first I'll go ahead and try to prompt it to boot again just so we can see like the difference before and after the coil. So let's do that. Still zero, zero amp draw when I'm prompting it to boot. So now we'll put that coil on and hopefully we'll see what looks like a, a, booting, a booting current consumption. Let's see if I can get this coil to take any, any solder first. It might not want to take the solder because this is a, the pads have actually broken off of the bottom of this. It's not. I don't even know if that's like metal or what the substance actually is anymore. So let's see if we can get to take some solder. I've gotten coils like this to take solder before, so I know that even though it probably won't look very good, it will probably work. continuity from those two pads then I'm just going to assume this coil is good enough and I do so I'll just go ahead and throw that coil onto the board Hopefully this is all it needs. Hopefully that's it. I don't actually know that it's attached all the way, but I think it is. Seems okay, I guess. So now, prompt it to boot and see if it uh, gives us some current consumption. We do, look, it's booting. Yeah, that looks like it's booting. 
so let's just see if it is booting. So I know the 12 Pro Max will give us a temperature warning when oops. it'll give us a temperature warning when we only have the top board and not the bottom board attached. I don't know if that's the case with the 12, but we will find that out shortly. I know the 12 Mini didn't do that, but who knows for the 12 Pro. But I do expect to see this turn on at the very least. We got an Apple logo. So this one's most likely going to be fine. I guess I'll let you guys see if it's going to give me the temperature sensor warning or not. It will probably boot to the swipe to recover screen, I'm assuming, because there's no bottom board attached here. So yeah, it's fully booted. It just goes dim screen when it's fully booted. That's normal. So I'll leave it on for a few seconds or a minute and then we'll see if it uh, switches to the swipe to or to the temperature sensor warning or not. I think honestly I think it would have already showed up if it was going to. On the other one it happened very very quickly. Oh, interesting. So it doesn't even boot to swipe to recover screen. It just let me into this phone right off the bat. So let me connect to the computer. You can see that. Yeah, I'm connected. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I have access to this phone, to the data on this phone already. Um, really interesting to note that I don't think the bottom board is needed at all. Um, it didn't even boot to the swipe to recover screen, which a lot of the times it will do. That's what the 11s do when it doesn't have a bottom board. Um, 12, it looks like you can just split the top board and, and take the, uh, the data directly from the top board without anything else. And that is a huge time saver. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. I'm happy to see that it's not overheating. I'm happy to see it's connected to the computer. Passcode's correct. Um, this one was just high impact and the high impact knocked off the boost coil. The boost coil would, uh, um, that's what boosts the, the battery voltage when it runs low. However, when that coil is just completely missing, that's the symptom that we'll see is um, it just won't turn on at all and it won't give us any type of current consumption um, when you press the power button when that coil is missing. Um, interestingly enough, however, if that coil is missing, but the boost chip itself is not on the board at all and you've just bridged boost to main, then I don't think that coil is actually needed. It will still boot normally. Um, however, when the boost IC is on there, then it does need the coil. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it worked. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Um, I'm glad you stopped by. I um, hope you learned something, and I hope you stop by again. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.